so the first step in, in towards this, uh, to doing such a framework would be uh, uh, to model computer systems and effects, right? So, so we are want to have a mathematical model that captures uh, uh, computer systems in general, how computers interact, uh, uh, information systems interact, and, uh, and of, of course, as part of it will be the attacks, because the attacks are part of, the, uh, part of how computers interact, right? So computers and humans and whoever was surrounded, right? So this already by itself, uh, it's an interesting task, and it's a very challenging task, and actually to do it right is, is a lot of the complexity. Um, and uh, so we'll get to that. Okay, so, so what should the model give you? So we're going back to what we said before. So it's allow capturing uh, really realistic systems. And, and, and there are lots of issues here that, in fact, I understood only over the years how many issues here are here in order when you want to really capture a realistic system. So you want to capture uh, 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 the processors, like the hardware processors, you know, cores, uh, multi-cores, whatever or, or not, uh, RAMs, disks, networks, switches, uh, uh, routers, all, all the hardware. Well, but you also want to capture more abstract things like processes, uh, like, uh, 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 like the operating system, uh, like uh, uh, modules of the operating system, applications, and what does it mean for, uh, uh, in the big system uh, uh, to be a module, right? So it's not always something that runs on the same, pro uh, on the same processor. It can be, you can look, it can, it can, you can actually look at a bunch of processes that run on different machines across the world and move around between machines and think of them logically as a single uh, uh, entity or process because it, 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 it's, uh, it fits you in some way. So you, you want to be able to capture those things. Okay, and, uh, and, you, and you also want to, to, to capture things like time and delay and uh, human interaction and, uh, uh, so, so, uh, and randomness. And so, so there are a lot of things to be, to be able to capture. Um, for instance, one thing that, uh, uh, that, that it, previous frameworks I did not, could not capture is the fact that the, the generation of new code that you actually can have a new dynamic code being generated and being uh, uh, playing as part of the network. It's something that today for us is kind of natural, right? You know, it's happening all the time. We download code, we, we generate it. There are those polymorphic viruses, but even before that. And uh, uh, we want to be able to capture that. Um, and then, of course, within that, we want to capture uh, all, the re all the realistic attacks, the, the, the network attacks, the ex exploits, side channels, human attacks, uh, 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 phishing, uh, uh, whatever. Um, and you want to capture the information seen by different components within the system, and you want to again capture efficiency, resource balance, etc. Um, and, and of course, in all of that, you want to allow different levels of abstraction and detail, and you want to be super natural, intuitive, and, uh, and all of that is, is very tricky, as, as you'll see. In fact, a lot of the work is actually to get that part, the, the, uh, the system model right. Um, and, uh, and, uh, and um, much of the work, uh, I think, in the, on the use of framework in the last, I think, 10 years has been on that. Uh, all the rest is kind of fixed from way before. Uh, okay, so, um, so the, second part, the second goal, the second idea is to capture security properties. Uh, so, so what kind of security properties you want to capture? So you want to capture uh, correctness or kind of like uh, uh, trace properties is like the uh, 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 those formal methodists like to call them. Uh, so uh, we want to say that in each execution, if event uh, C happens, uh, and then the, the, if the condition happens, then the effect happens, right? So in every trace of the system. So that's why it's called trace properties, right? So you can look at a single trace of execution and this, you verify the condition on, this, on every particular trace, right? This kind of maybe in some sense the easiest ones to, to capture. Uh, but very, it's, it's a very important uh, uh, set of properties. Um, sorry. Um, and then there's things like the probabilistic statements. Uh, you know, things that happen with high probability, with low probability, then you cannot already verify by just looking at a single trace, but uh, you have to look at uh, the system overall. Uh, and then the issues like secrecy and privacy. This is kind of a very, kind of an odd animal, right? It's not something of uh, no property of any particular trace. In fact, it's not even clear a priori what it means. And we you know cryptographically it has one meaning. Uh, uh, the information theoretically gets a different meaning. You know, so what it is to know and learn and not to know and not to learn. We know there is a, it's a whole bag kind of worms there. So we want to be able to capture that. 
Well, the capture liveness, uh, timing of events, things happen before the other, uh, uh, cost and quantitative trade-offs, you want to have all these things. Uh, and, and we also want to capture, in many cases, combinations of all those things. Uh, not just the thing or stuff. Things like uh, uh, an attacker can either learn some piece of information or, or modify another piece of information, but not both. So it's two, two uh, different uh, type of things, but you want to, to capture them. Or an attacker can either learn or modify, but only after it's committed to, to, to its input or something. Uh, uh, so, so, uh, so you want to capture things of, of, of that form. Uh, and, uh, and also you want to capture things like the success of the attack and the amount it learned or the, the probability in which it modified is proportional to the amount of resources uh, invested. So you want to be able to capture all, all, all those things. Uh, and, uh, and, and it's not clear how to do it uh, uh, with this kind of uh, uh, list of properties. So, 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 um, so instead we'll do something else that we'll see in a minute. Um, but just to say uh, before that, that uh, the third step in the analysis is uh, um, after you, you set the model, you set the security properties, you want to prove that a system satisfies the set of properties. And this is uh, uh, um, kind of more, more technical uh, uh, part, uh, but it's of course very important and, and we have to keep it in mind, right? And how to prove it by hand, automated, uh, how tractable it is. Uh, and, uh, and that's something again that we have to keep in mind. And then we have you know, what, what assumptions, how do we put in the assumptions, model them, et cetera, and not to make it too restrictive. Um, so, so there are model assumptions, cryptographic hardness assumptions, et cetera, trust assumptions. Uh, and then, of course, there's the issue of uh, uh, reusing the proofs, right? So once we analyze something, we want to not need to analyze it again and again and again in different, uh, slightly different settings. And we want to analyze it in the simplest possible way. Uh, uh, and not in, a, in, in the simplest, most possible uh, uh, model we want, uh, oh, to do this, the minimum amount of steps for analysis so that later we can use it elsewhere. So that's something that you would like to do. And of course, this, uh, 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 this again lends to modularity, kind of robustness of, 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 of the analysis. 